Hey, welcome everybody. I'm Nurse Nick. Uh, today we're going to be talking about pharmacology. I'm a pharmacology instructor at a private college. I'm an emergency department nurse. I'm also American Heart Association, ACLS, and PALS instructor. So the first group of medications, I'm going to go over cardiac medications. We'll do this, break this up into separate videos so it's not exhausting. And then at the end, I will do one video where we kind of streamline all the medications in one video, quick and dirty, just the way that you like to learn it, all right? So the first set of medications, or the first cardiac medication we're gonna go over are gonna be ACE inhibitors. Uh, ACE inhibitors are medications that have a suffix of pril. So this is captopril, this is lisinopril. These medications, you wanna remember the adverse effects by remembering ACE, A-C-E. This is going to be angioedema, this is going to be cough, and this is going to be elevated potassium. Elevated potassium, you should know what your ranges are. So this can cause uh, hyperkalemia. You should order a BMP. And what's the range for your potassium you should know? It's 3.5 to 5. If I can add little snippets of information, your potassium range is also the same as your albumin range. So try to remember that as well, 3.5 to 5. So if your patient develops a cough, the, med, uh, the physician might actually switch them over to an ARB, which is our next medication. So ARB medications are gonna be your Sartans, your Valsartan and your Losartan. So this medication can additionally call, have an adverse effect of angioedema, which if you don't know what angioedema is, it's the swelling of your mouth, swelling of the tongue. Uh, it's kind of like allergic reaction. It can get really significant. And if your tongue swells up too big, it may actually cause an airway obstruction, which um, is obviously a big issue. So angioedema with ARBs, Losartan, Valsartan, and this one may also cause GI upset. Both of those medications are just given for hypertension. So the next medication is going to be our diuretics. So there's four diuretics that I wanna go over with you. The first diuretic is gonna be furosemide. It's a loop diuretic. So this medication uh, is given to make patients diurese. You should be urinating. So this is given to patients with edema or diagnosis of heart failure. The loop diuretic may cause hypokalemia. It also might cause uh, hyponatremia. So what's your range for potassium? It should be 3.5 to 5. You should also know your sodium levels, 135 to 145. Loop diuretics like furosemide can also cause uh, ototoxicity, and you want to encourage foods with potassium. Another rule of thumb with all the diuretics, they're going to mess with fluids, so you should always look at electrolytes when you have fluid changes, right? Like dehydration or overhydration or fluid volume excess. But also, you should do strict INOs. Some people with heart failure might be on diet restrictions, so you want to consider that. And this medication should be given during the day. You don't want to give a, di a diuretic during the evening before somebody's going to go to bed and you know, have the potential risk for them getting up, having to urinate excessively in the middle of the night and, and fall. When you, um, This might also cause hypotension, orthostatic hypotension because you're losing so much fluid. So that was furosemide. The next medication is a thiazide diuretic. So thiazide diuretic, this is going to be hydrochlorothiazide. Hydrochlorothiazide may also have the same risk for hypokalemia. And with furosemide and thiazide diuretics, they have risk for hypokalemia. You want to encourage foods with potassium. And if you look up the top 10 on Google, you're going to find pumpkin, cooked spinach, avocados, broccoli, everybody in those bananas. I feel like bananas is never on there, though, right? Watermelon and sweet potatoes. All right. The third diuretic. This is gonna be potassium sparing diuretic. So it spares potassium. This is spironal, spironolactone. So spironolactone is potassium sparing. So this has a risk of hyperkalemia, which hyperkalemia is obviously very dangerous. What other disorder do we see hyperkalemia in? Like DKA, right? It's very dangerous. So remember your range for your potassium. What is that? 3.5 to 5, you got it. Uh, spironolactone, potassium sparing diuretic, may also have an adverse effect causing gynecomastia, gynecomastia or man boobs, right? And it can also cause impotence. With these medications, you want to avoid salt substitutes. The last diuretic is going to be an osmotic diuretic. 
the osmotic diuretic is going to be mannitol. So mannitol is going to be given for increase in intracranial pressure, interocular pressure, and also facial edema. When, you have, uh, when you're going to give mannitol, this medication is usually kept warm in the pharmacy because this can cause, it can get crystalloids in it if it gets cooled. So this medication is always going to be given through a filtered line and it may cause heart failure or renal failure and you want to look for those crystallizations with those medications. So the last medication we're going to go over for this sequence in the video is going to be your calcium channel blockers. With your calcium channel blockers, you want to remember take Zim Pines to the mill. So take Zim Pines to the mill. I kind of see pine trees, trees in a wood mill or something like that. But this helps me or should help you recognize the names of these medications. So Zim is going to be for cardizim or diltiazim. Uh, pine is going to be for amylodipine or nifedipine. And mill is going to be for verapamil. These medications are given, uh, they can be given for antidysrhythmic. So at times in the emergency department, if you come in with new onset AFib with RBR or atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular rate, which is just a bunch of fancy words for fast heart rate with AFib, <clears throat> we'll start you on a calcium channel blocker, a diltiazem or cardizem drip to hopefully slow down your heart rate and get you out of that dysrhythmia. This medication, of course, with all blood pressure medications, you want to check your vitals before you give it. Don't give it to hypotensive patients or patients that are too bradycardic. But also, you can't give grapefruit juice this med with this medication. Grapefruit juice with a lot of medications, not all of them, because it might be a distractor, but with a lot of medications, and specifically calcium channel blockers, grapefruit juice uh, causes toxicity of the medication. So this can enhance the effects, effects and be problematic. All right? So I'm Nurse Nick. That's going to wrap up this video. Go ahead and like and follow. We're going to be doing a lot of more NCLEX review. Thank you.